Ever notice something that, like, freaks you out a little? Like how we talk about freedom so much in this country when our prison population is over 2 million people. That's getting pretty close to 1% of our population. Even dictators don't come close to locking up that many people. Do you think we say it to distract ourselves from the erosion of real freedoms by the system? I just think there's some parts of the economy that we need to keep capitalism the hell out of. And imprisonment is definitely one of them. What do you mean? Well, when you have private prisons, you end up with this whole feedback loop where you have well-paid lobbyists doing favors to ensure that more and more Americans are locked up in their prisons every year, resulting in harsher penalties in a system that's designed to encourage recidivism, not discourage it. They want you back in jail because that's what makes them money. I get what you're saying, but that's also a problem in public prisons. That's not to say the private prisons aren't in many ways worse. How do you feel about these new ICE jails? They built one near where I grew up, and the local sheriff's been getting investigated by the DOJ based on his statements to police to bring him some Mexicans so that he could fill up the new jail that was sitting empty and losing money by the day. Right, it was losing the money. Giving people financial incentives to incarcerate people is the most anti-freedom thing I can think of. What's even worse is prison labor, where people are paid between a quarter and a dollar per hour for their work, and that's before deductions. In many cases, the fees associated with living in prison eat that up rather quickly. So they're in prison, forced to do labor for what amounts to do nothing. I don't see how these practices are much different from slavery. Prison being slavery is a little bit of a stretch, I think, but I see what you mean. I'd like to point out that only 1% of prisoners work for companies other than the prison, and they're paid by the federal minimum wage. It's the internal jobs like kitchen and laundry that are often done by inmates for dollars a day. That being said, they exist to soak up taxpayer budgets and grants, often based on the volume of prisoners. The more people, the more money. Even if they aren't making a product for you, just cutting down on your overhead. And I guess ICE jails at least the people we're putting in them aren't citizens. We had internment camps that we filled with Jap We had internment camps that we filled with Americans of Japanese descent during the Second World War. You mean American concentration camp? Okay, that's definitely a stretch. I cannot imagine a more offensive way to portray the situation. To compare the Japanese internment camps to the Nazi or communist concentration camps is offensive to the Jewish community and any reasonable American. You're making the mistake of thinking that all concentration camps were as bad as the ones you've heard about in history books. Not even every Nazi concentration camp killed people. Some were just forced labor camps, like modern private prisons. Concentration camp is a term that predates both Hitler and communism. The Nazi concentration camps were more usually and more accurately described as death camps. But a concentration camp, such as those operated by the British during the Boer War, does not, in and of itself, suggest atrocity. In an unbiased definition would be, a prison camp in which political dissidents, members of minority groups, etc. are confined. I guess that's fair then, if you're willing to acknowledge that they weren't death camps, like the many that Hitler ran, gassing and burning American citizens. I'm sure they were pretty bad, but I heard the Japanese American camps weren't really all that bad. Certainly, they were no vacation for them, but I'd imagine the actual prisons at the time were probably worse. Hell, they even got to play baseball. That's one fence you definitely shouldn't climb over to get your ball back. You know, because of the guards and their rifles. I guess what you're saying is that they weren't putting them in ovens, wantonly shooting them, making them drink from toilets as their only source of water, not giving them basic toiletries or feeding them, giving them dozens to a cage like dogs in a kennel, Camps where hundreds of children are sexually assaulted, sometimes by guards. I see what you're doing here. That's right, the so-called temporary emergency influx shelters. America has concentration camps again, some for children only. Unlike the ones from the 50s, these are more adequately fit the moniker of concentration camps. We're just cramming more and more people into the same space, the same cages. Up to 155 in a cell only meant contain 35, or 76 in one meant only for a dozen. Infants without diapers are being cared for by kids who don't even know them. 
With less food and less access to clean drinking water, the more we cram in. We're treating children like sardines and sex toys after ripping them from their parents, and you know what's worse? Someone's making a profit off of it. You're damn right. Before his time in the White House, John Kelly had previously sat on the board of DC Capital Partners, owner of Caliber International, run the Homestead Facility, aka the largest and only for-profit child detention centers. And so Kelly proposed separating and detaining children, knowing that it would benefit the company he previously worked for. And then he left the White House, and then he joined the board of Caliburn, effectively making money off of the terrible policies he pushed for, having known it would benefit Caliburn, his former and current place of work. All right, you know what to do by now. It's YouTube. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description. Kidcentration Camp Profiteer 